because there's a couple verses here I just want to read. Being prepared is always a good thing. Being prepared is a good thing. I, I definitely want to make sure people don't misunderstand what I'm trying to teach when it comes to this subject because there's things taken, I think, to the extreme on the wrong ends, kind of on both sides of, of an issue this when it comes to like being prepared and prepping and stuff like that. And I don't want to be misunderstood at all. I'm really going to try my best to, to try to teach this subject as clearly and as thoroughly as I can. But I also think that there is a lot of where just too much focus is spent on the physical nature of being prepared for things and people could just really invest and spend way too much time focusing on those things. And w what we need is the proper balance, the right thing. We're going to start off with John 16. Jesus Christ said these words, verse number one, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. So Jesus gives warning. We receive warnings from the scripture. We have the revelation. We are given and we're told things to come. And the reason why is so we could be prepared. So that when these things come, he's saying, don't be offended. When this comes, I don't want this to take you by surprise. So he's saying, I'm going to tell you right up front, this is what's going to happen. Because when things take you by surprise, unfortunately what happens is people end up not making very wise decisions. When you know in advance what you're getting into, you have time to think about it, meditate on it, research it, look it up in the Bible, do whatever you need to do to kind of come up with, okay, what am I going to do in this situation? Perfect example of this, you know, with, with my wife and I, we got married, we were both a, a little bit older, late 20s. You know, and um, or me, I was early 30s. But um, when it came to having children, we both knew what we know. Okay, um, well, I did a little bit more of the pushing, I think, at first. But uh, I'm sure my wife would tell you that she's very happy with the route that we went. But we, you know, I did a lot of research into having kids and, you know, vaccinations and home birth, hospital birth, with all this stuff, right? You learn, look up all these things. But then... You know, something out of plan happened. <laughs> something that, that wasn't supposed to happen. Now we find ourselves in a whole new situation. So it's like, oh no, now we're going to the hospital. Now this is happening. And, and just the, the, the uncertainty and the chaos can cause you to start to fear or to maybe rely on, on you, then you're forced to rely on other people. We, it, it's, it, as well as you possibly can, it's good to be well prepared and think of all the circumstances that you might be able to come up with, right? To, to be prepared. Now, no one is ever going to be 100% prepared for everything that's going to happen in life. That's life, right? You have to deal with things that happen in life. Ideally, though, you'd have all the information that you need to make decisions. Ideally, when your car breaks down, you already know a lot about vehicles and you go, oh, I could just fix this. I know what the problem is right here. We'll get this taken care of right away or whatever the case may be, right? But we don't live in that ideal world. You're never going to know everything. So being prepared is good. Jesus Christ is warning his disciples. He's warning us. He's letting us know, hey, these things are going to happen so that you don't just get taken by surprise. It's great to know that there's a hurricane headed towards the coast. Why? Because it gives people time to prepare. It's not just going to hit them just boom, all of a sudden you wake up, you know, you go to bed yesterday, seems like a nice day. The next day, start, some storms start rolling in, which is like, oh, it looks like we have some storms. And then boom, you're getting hit with a hurricane, right? And, and, and it's really, really bad. It's nice to have that warning. It's nice to know in advance and to be able to prepare. Those are great things. I'm all for it. Prepare, have, you know, if you're going to stay, roll out the storm, have the water and the food and, the, and your shelter secured and for, you know, everything ready to go. I think that's a good thing to do. It's wise. It just makes sense. You don't even need someone preaching to tell you that, yeah, that makes sense. We get it. But people can end up going really, really overboard and over the top when it comes to a lot of this stuff. And unfortunately, a lot of that comes from just really it comes from a deep-seated fear 
we don't have to be afraid. And here's the thing. We're, we're, I'm going to go through the preparations that we as Christians ought to go through. And I've prioritized them in the order that I think is most important when it comes to us being prepared as Christians. Prepared for everything. Prepared for anything. And it starts with the heart. More than your physical need, more than other things, what we need to have prepared first and foremost is our heart prepared to serve God, to do what's right. And as we step through these, you'll start to see why I put them in the order that I did. Because if you can follow these and get these down and focus mostly on the first one and, mostly, and then on the second one and the third one, you're going to find out that by the end of it, the last one of just like being prepared physically for stuff, it, it's, it, it totally falls in at that, that lower, lower priority. And we'll see that. I'll, I'll, I'll explain. You'll understand more what I'm talking about when we get into this. So it, number, point number one, we need to prepare our hearts. That is of utmost priority. I mean, think about this. I mean, even just with salvation, right? You need to, to receive Christ as your Savior. You have to put your heart, your trust on Jesus Christ. You can have all of the physical wealth and goods and everything else in the whole world. And if you don't prepare your heart to put your faith on Jesus Christ, it's not going to do you any good. You could survive all the disasters. You could survive all the economic collapses. You could survive whatever is going to come your way on this earth. But at the end of the day, you're still going to die and your soul is going to go somewhere. Right? That's the most obvious yeah, of course, we need to get our hearts right and prepared to, to be, you know, confronted with the Lord when we die. And the way to do it is we put our faith in Jesus Christ. But even more than that, as a, as a believer, we need to have our hearts prepared unto the Lord. Look at 1 Samuel uh, chapter 7 where we started here. Verse number 3, the Bible says, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord, your God, excuse me, unto the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth that are among you and prepare your hearts unto the Lord and serve him only. And he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. So what's happening here is that the Philistines are scaring the children of Israel because they're coming up against them and they were going to you know, destroy them, invade them, you know, whatever. And he's saying, you don't have to fear, but you need to prepare your heart to serve God and serve Him alone. Get rid of these idols. Get rid of these false gods. Prepare your heart to serve God only. And if you do that, God will deliver you out of this trouble. 